Hexadome, the Aristea Showdown. Blind Spot Games did an alpha test of the new turn-based, team-based tactical arena game. Hexadome is based on the tabletop game Aristea by Corpus Belli. We've played a lot of Aristea on the channel here, so we're glad to give you a look at and our opinion of this new computer video game. Please note that it is still in the alpha stage, so anything and everything in this video may be subject to change. That's the point of the alpha. Look at the gameplay and see if it's fun before it's too late to make it work. If you already know about Aristea or the rest of the Infinity Universe, then it should be a familiar representation of the world that Corpus Belli built. The characters and flavor are all there, even though you're not physically rolling dice or drawing cards. The core characters from the tabletop game are there along with the Soldiers of Fortune expansion, so there is good variety in team building. Not all abilities converted to the new medium like you might expect, and a few new mechanics are introduced that really change the way things play. If you're looking for a straight translation of the tabletop, you should probably stay with Tabletop Simulator. This is a video game, and it's meant to be played like one. Characters do have their main attacks, abilities, and passives, so Hexer displaces, Mushashi slaughters, and Valkyrie cannot be moved. Stats are fairly straightforward, and everyone came through as they should. Maximus is tough, Gata is fast, and Luna shoots to kill. Now all that being said, there are a whole bunch of differences too. Since this is a video game and not a tabletop experience, most of the changes deal with two aspects. First, you don't roll dice or draw cards. This seems obvious, but those things are what makes a lot of the feeling of a tabletop game. There are visual representations for the dice rolls, but that's not the same as counting stars and shields. But that's okay, this is a video game. The computer handles the roles, and the tactics cards will come into it as well. The second aspect is the whole thinking and social aspect of the tabletop game. In the real world, there is a lot of social interaction above the game itself, and a lot of time can be spent pondering cards and positions, discussing tactics and considering actions. In a video game, this would translate into one person just sitting there doing nothing for an indeterminate time. Things like switches are flavorful, but they can bog things down as it adds to decisions per turn. The video game chooses to automate or change some abilities and interactions as a way to try to keep the flow moving as a video game needs to. Some of the new mechanics help convert the dice and cards aspect into video game. New mechanics include the timeline and cheers. The timeline replaces initiative and also the power cost of abilities. That's right, all abilities cost one point and everybody gets two points. At first, this seems unfair, especially to characters like Hexer with cheap abilities. But then the timeline reveals itself. Some abilities take very little time compared to attacks or movement. For example, Hexer's Vade Retro takes so little time that you can get multiple activations before points are scored. It balances out allowing the quick actions to occur faster than things like Mushashi's big swing. Cheers are a big part of the game. Since you aren't drawing cards, tactics are bought with cheers. Everyone has a few basic ones, and the characters in your team provide their unique signature tactics. As you perform maneuvers, you gain cheers. You can then use those cheers to activate the tactics. Bigger and better tactics, the more cheers it will require to trigger. Cheers can also be used to upgrade your standard attacks and abilities, which is not in the tabletop game. It adds a real value to the cheers as a currency, as it permanently boosts the skills for the rest of that match. It's similar to permanently adding stars and switches to character roles. Imagine Mushashi going to town with three extra stars, or Hexer's Vade Retro able to displace multiple spaces. But since cheers are a currency, you might not have enough yet, or you may want to use them for a tactic, like Mushashi's extra action. Sponsors have always been a big part of the lore, and they get represented in the Hexadome now too. 
There are three markers on the field, and activating them takes them in your sponsor's name. Having more of yours showing when score is kept earns you even more bonuses. This is a head-to-head -head game, so it has all the usual array of play options, including ranked leaderboards, private duels, locked in the alpha, games against bots, and even a sandbox to let you learn new aristos. The audio is off to a great start, with a few of the character voices already in place and some wonderful music as well. The Hexadome itself is well rendered, and I hope to see a variety of environments and different arenas as the game develops. An animated crowd would also go a long way to enhance the sports arena feeling. The Alpha only has the standard assault scenario, so we'll see if some of the others, like Blitz or King of the Hill, make it into the final release. In the future, the team at Blindspot Games do plan on making the other character expansions, so we'll see what else they may be cooking up. As it is still an alpha, a lot of details are just placeholders. The cheer bar, dice roll indicators, and other pieces are in progress, and the alpha process is all about shaking loose inconsistencies and things that don't make sense to the players. Players unfamiliar with Aristea may not understand certain aspects or realize certain character abilities, like Valkyrie being unmovable. Veteran players will get caught out by expecting a tabletop ability that doesn't quite work the same way. Alpha testing is all about finding out what is and isn't working with the core game design, and there is lively discussion about it on their Discord channel right now. So how do we feel about it here at Shameless Mayhem? Overall, it really does capture the feel of the Aristea tabletop game. Things behave the way you expect, with a few exceptions, and the flow and pace of the game means a match is usually over in about half an hour. We had a lot of fun playing the game to win, as well as trying wacky things just to make the alpha break. There are still plenty of bugs and placeholders, but we do see a solid and fun game shaping up. We really look forward to seeing more. We plan on making a few demo and tactical videos for the Hexadome. So subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments below if you have any questions, comments, requests for videos, or even just rants about how wrong we are. For Shameless Mayhem, thanks for watching and have fun.